How do calcium neuron inhibitors actually work? Hi, my name is Christine from Reno Tutorials and today I wanted to give you some bonus content which builds beautifully on episode 2 of my new series, Immunology, The War Is Over. Over the next few minutes, we are going to be answering the question, how do calcineurin inhibitors actually work? Calcineurin inhibitors, such as cyclosporin and tacrolimus, are commonly prescribed immunosuppressants. When it comes to transplant medicine, these drugs have been absolute game changers, significantly reducing rejection and prolonging the life of transplanted organs. But we also use them to treat a variety of autoimmune diseases as well. So these are powerful immunosuppressants. But how do they actually work? Of course, they inhibit calcineurin. But what even is calcineurin and how does blocking it lead to suppression of the immune system? Over the next few minutes, we will be gaining absolute clarity on this. In a nutshell, calcineurin inhibitors block the production of interleukin-2. Remember interleukin-2 from episode 2? This is T-cell activation fuel. Interleukin-2 is to T-cells what cups of coffee are to me. Following antigen presentation, also known as signal 1, the next step is signal 2, which is also known as co-stimulation and results in the production of interleukin-2 and its receptor. So the T-cells make interleukin-2 and then consume interleukin-2 in order to proliferate into an army of T-cells. So if you block interleukin-2, you're going to be depriving the T-cells of their activation fuel. You are going to take away their coffee. And taking away T-cell coffee is an excellent way to suppress someone's immune system. So that's the overall effect of these drugs, but I still haven't told you exactly how they do this. Let's unpack that now. In order to make interleukin-2, you need a transcription factor, and the transcription factor responsible for interleukin-2 production is known as NFAT, which stands for Nuclear Factor of Activated T-Cells. One of my favourite things on planet Earth is when someone names a molecule after what that molecule actually does. And NFAT is one of those amazing molecules. It does exactly what it says on the tin. So NFAT, nuclear factor of activated T-cells, goes to the nucleus of activated T-cells and causes that T-cell to make interleukin-2 and the interleukin-2 receptor. It's kind of like NFAT goes on a coffee run to the nucleus and puts in an order for interleukin-2. But NFAT can only do this coffee run if it's free to travel to the nucleus in the first place. And rather deliberately, in a resting T-cell, NFAT is kept far away from the nucleus because we don't want the T-cell just spontaneously activating itself for no reason. So until the T-cell is activated by an antigen, NFAT is kept far away from the nucleus and it's anchored there by a phosphate molecule. So if you can imagine the NFAT is there in the T-cell and it's always eager to go to the nucleus on this interleukin-2 coffee run, but it can't move because it's anchored to the cytoplasm by this phosphate molecule. And this is where calcineurin comes in. Calcineurin is a serine threonine phosphatase, which basically means that it's an enzyme in the business of removing phosphate from other molecules. So calcineurin can come along, chop the phosphate off the NFAT and set NFAT free. NFAT will then travel to the nucleus and encourage that T-cell to make lots and lots of interleukin-2 and its receptor. And so this is exactly what happens during co-stimulation or signal 2. And so with this knowledge to hand, we can now easily understand the role of calcineurin inhibitors. These block calcineurin so that phosphate that anchors the NFAT in place is not chopped away, NFAT remains trapped, interleukin-2 production is minimised and this impairs T-cell activation. And although cyclosporin and tacrolimus both block calcineurin, they do so in slightly different ways. Cyclosporin binds to something known as cyclophilin to form a complex, and this complex blocks calcineurin, whilst tacrolimus, also known as FK506, forms a complex with something known as FKB12, which in turn blocks calcineurin. 
So that's how calcium neuron inhibitors actually work. Thank you for joining me and I will see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye.